What's going on and welcome to the team selection video for game week 34. Very quickly, let's have a look back at how the team went in game week 33. I scored 82 points. I was expected to score 80, so pretty much bang on there. And I've gone from 119k to 101k, literally one point outside the top 100k. And I'm happy with that considering the season that we've had and considering the fact that this week, I got my captaincy call completely wrong. If I captain basically anyone else in my team, Saka, Barnes, Salah, Burn, Dan Burn, even being a potential captain option with the double game week, I would have been inside the top 100K and I would have been on a massive green arrow, potentially even cracking the 100 point mark this week. But I picked Fernandez. I had two free transfers last week. And instead of going Kane to Ronaldo, which is what I was hoping to do, I used both free transfers and I brought in Bruno Fernandez, primarily because I thought he was the best captain option. But in hindsight, I really should have thought more about Manchester United's injury crisis, particularly in midfield. Guys like Fred and McTominay being out, it was going to mean that Bruno was likely to have to play a little bit deeper. And when the lineup came out for Manchester United versus Norwich, and I saw Lingard and Pogba and Bruno in midfield, I knew that spelt bad news for Bruno. And in the Liverpool game, he got himself booked. And just the one point there, Manchester United, the less said about that double game week, the better. And it's very frustrating to see Bruno there with the captain's armband with just the six points. I am happy with returns from the other double game week players I've got in my team. Dan Byrne, clean sheet, and two bonus points at home to Crystal Palace. Harvey Barnes got the goal. He got subbed off when Leicester had the clean sheet. And then Leicester conceded, meaning that he went from one bonus point to three, and he retained his clean sheet point as well. So 12 points from Harvey Barnes is fantastic. 19 from Salah. Saka with 10 points as well, and Veghorst with the 10. So overall, I am quite pleased with the results. Just frustrating to not get that captaincy call right. And a lot of other managers who probably didn't have as good a team as I did this week were able to outscore me just because they got their captain call right. So we can see this week is a great example of how getting your captaincy call right can have a massive impact on how well you do in a particular game week. Let's now have a look at how my team is shaping up to game week 34 and what transfers I am planning to make. All right, having a look at the team ahead of game week 34, starting off in defense, we've got Ramsdale and goals at home to Manchester United. I'm not too confident of a clean sheet in that match. Arsenal's defense hasn't looked too strong recently. We've mentioned the injuries to guys like Partey and Kieran Tierney. Ramsdale has conceded eight goals from an expected goals conceded of just four recently. So his expected goals prevented, how many goals he's keeping out based on the average, is actually the second worst of all goalkeepers in the league. And I'd be tempted to play someone like Foster if Foster wasn't coming up against Manchester City away. So hoping for some save points from Ramsdale and United for all of their troubles at the back. Their attack has still been quite strong. We've got Trent at home to Everton. Dan Byrne away to Norwich. It's probably the last time we'll see the absolute hero that is Dan Byrne in this team. Hopefully, it's a bit of narrative, but hopefully we can see Dan Byrne get a cheeky goal from a set piece. Norwich don't defend set piece as well. So hoping for maybe an attacking return from Dan Byrne to say thank you for your service. We've got Reese James with the double game week. Chelsea have quite a few injuries at the moment at the back. Rudiger looks like he'll miss that first game against West Ham. And I'm not too confident of a clean sheet in either of these fixtures for Chelsea. I've got Reese James there. I'm hoping that Thomas Tuchel plays him at the right wing back. In right side center back, he still has some attacking threat, but obviously not the same as if he was playing right wing back. West Ham and Manchester United don't really have any particular threat from that advanced left side. And I don't really see the need for Thomas Tuchel from a tactical point of view to play him at right-sided centre-back. But it's more than just tactical. I think it's also about managing Rhys James's fitness. And with so many fixtures to come for Chelsea, when you think about the FA Cup and the double game weeks, maybe we see Rhys James at that right-sided centre-back in one of these fixtures. And maybe Chelsea even play a four at the back. With all of the injuries they've got and players like Christensen playing so poorly recently. I don't know if Thomas Tuchel has three good centre-backs and fit centre-backs 
to actually pick in these fixtures in double game week 34. So if he doesn't have the center backs to pick, it's very likely he might go to a four at the back. And if he does, it's not the same as playing with the three and Reese James being at a right wing back. So with all these questions and concerns, I like having Reese James. I just not confident about putting the captain's armband on him as some people are this game week. He is expected to score the most points of all defenders. We've got Alonso very close by, Rudiger there, but Rudiger will miss the first game against West Ham. So if you've got him in your team, just be conscious of that. Thiago Silva, I'm not sure I'd be bringing him into my team. And then Trent with a single game week against Everton. It's a great fixture and he's expected to score 6.39 points. Looking in the midfield, we've got Bruno, Saka, Barnes, Son and Salah. We've got some question marks around guys like Harvey Barnes and Bruno Fernandes. Harvey Barnes, Leicester's progression in Europe kind of means that we're going to see more rotation from Barnes and Madison. I just don't know how many games they're going to be starting between now and the end of the season. And Harvey Barnes, you know, even if he does start a match, he's likely to be taken off as well. I thought that I was setting my team up quite well by getting Barnes in early, but Leicester's progression in Europe has just kind of scuppered those plans. So actually Harvey Barnes' head is on the chopping block this week. Same for Bruno Fernandes, despite having the double game week. I've already mentioned the positioning with McTominay and Fred out injured. Pogba is now out injured as well. So I think it's very likely we see Bruno drop a little bit deeper in these fixtures against Arsenal and Chelsea. And when he does, he's just not the same FPL asset. So yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about Bruno and Harvey Barnes out of this team. Son, Salah, Saka, happy to hold these three. Salah, a legitimate captain option despite the single game week this week. You can see we've got Havertz with the most expected points of all midfielders. Bruno very close behind. Mason Mount, the two Chelsea midfielders with a double. Salah, and then Sancho. And then up front, we've got Veghorst and Mateta. Two decent home fixtures for both of these strikers, but it's all about the expected minutes. And, you know, will Mateta start that game? We saw Odson Edward start against Newcastle, but he played quite poorly. Mateta came on and looked quite good. So I'm hoping that Patrick Vieira sees that and starts Mateta because it's a great fixture. Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park are a very strong team playing against Leeds. And Veghorst, well, Burnley beat Southampton 2-0 in Week 33. They're just one point behind Everton. Can we see the great escape from Burnley? And if we do, I just have to hope that Veghorst is involved in any of the attacking returns for Burnley. So that's the team as things stand. I've got one free transfer, and I've got about 0.3 in the bank. But I'm planning on a couple of transfers even planning on taking a minus four, potentially a minus eight, and uh, shaking up the team, particularly in midfield. Because right now, I'm not confident on Harvey Barnes starting against Aston Villa or even playing the full 90. Veghorst is there, but again, how much am I confident of a return against Wolves at home? And then Bruno Fernandes at 11.6 is quite expensive. And I've got my eye on some of the Chelsea players. We spoke about guys like Mason Mount, and Kai Havertz with quite a lot of expected points this week. So I'm thinking about making a few transfers and I'll show you those transfers right now. So if I make the transfers that I'm thinking of doing, this is how my team would look for game week 34. You can see that my expected points has jumped from 67 to almost 75 there, which is about 15, 14 points above the top 10K expected score for game week 34. Now that will increase as players in the top 10K buy Chelsea assets, but it's comforting to know that as things stand, my team is expected to score quite a few points above the average in the top 10K this week. The transfers that I'm thinking about making and having this team would be Bruno Fernandes to Mason Mount, Harvey Barnes to Kai Havertz, and then Matt Doherty to Cancelo. Cancelo's got a great fixture at home to Watford. It's just a single game for Man City, but I love that fixture at home against Watford. You have to think that's almost a guaranteed clean sheet. There might be attacking potential there for Cancelo. He is suspended for the first Champions League game, so I'm confident of him starting this Premier League fixture. Kai Havertz would come in with a double. At the moment, I would be favoring captaining Havertz over Mounts, Mason Mount might be on penalties if Jorginho is not in the team. I just think that Kai Havertz, having had his rest against Arsenal, 
I think he's a little bit of a better captain option than Mount this week, but there's really not too much to separate the two. And there's even not that much to separate Salah from the captaincy. And I think Havertz, Mount, and Salah are all fantastic captain options this week. And we might see the community really split on captain options this week. And when the community is split, that's when you can see some really big rank increases or decreases, just like we saw this week. Some people captain Bruno, some captain Ronaldo, some captain the Spurs player, and some captained Salah, and even Bruno from Newcastle. So it'll be interesting to see where the captaincy goes this week. This is the team, it would be for a minus eight. I've got 0.5 in the bank, so I don't need to force any moves until deadline. But I really like the way this team looks. I am expected to score almost eight points more with these transfers than if I had done nothing to my team. So a minus eight, the algorithms are predicting that I'll come out even if I take the minus eight, but I think that I'm likely to even outscore that and pay it back immediately when you consider I'm getting in a few double game week players. So that's the team as things stand. I will be updating my team on Twitter. And I'll let you know on Twitter if I make any late changes. So make sure you go and follow me at FPL Inzaghi over on Twitter. But thanks so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what transfers you've made for Game Week 34. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.